So I was saying, uh, welcome, heroes. Welcome, innovator. Welcome, crazy people. Welcome, entrepreneur. My name is Nicola Dalmazzo. I work at Google, but I love startups. I invest in four different startups in three different continents. I'm an advisor in cryptocurrency. I work with in innovative startups across the region, and I'm very, very, very happy to be here today to talk about Google Maps, talk about how this technology that is powering uh, your everyday commute, that help you to discover restaurants, to navigate the world, can also power your business. I want to start with a quiz, just to move a little bit uh, your energy in the morning, right? Who knows these applications? First one, shout, shout, shout. U, 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 Uber. OK, great. Second one, Airbnb, very good. Third one, more difficult. You get the price. Monzo. If you don't know Monzo, you should know Monzo. Last one, let's go one of the largest classified in the world in the US, in US, United States, based in the United States. OK, now second questions. What they all have in common? They are very big, they are very successful, they have a lot of money, and they all use Google Maps. That's very good. So this is our introduction, right? This is our companies that talk about us, our technology. But today, I want to do three things. The first one is to inspire you. You are the crazy people. You are the innovator. We just give you technology. Go innovate. Second one, I want to tell you how you can start today to test this for free. OK, good. Third, if you like it, I can tell you also how you can scale it and make it like an enterprise service that serves millions of customers that hopefully you will get in the future, OK? So let's start. First of all, you are not alone, right? There are these big ones, but you say, yeah, but OK, you know, but Uber, it's, of course, is in transportation. OK, Airbnb, they have to show different kind of hotels or place, so Maps is OK. There are more than 5 million apps that are using us. We are one of the largest API use across all the tech industry. And you will see we can do so many f different things. Let's go into that. The first one, it's very high topic. We all know that data is key today. So you, have, you need to capture this data. You have to use the data. You have to have an infrastructure to use the data. What Forbes say, it's that 70% of all the data that is produced today has a location component. Think about every time you click your phone, your phone is able to understand where you are, where your customer is. That's very, very important. Every small IoT go around, it can have a location component. Every Gojek go around captures so much information about traffic, about where, where people are, where people go. Okay? So we want to help you to capture this information better, more precisely, in a scalable way, and use it for your business. Second thing is something we learned from the past. Explorer that ta take a boat from Europe and came here, they didn't go to school. They were coming from many, many different countries. They didn't speak English. How they could understand each other and understand where to go? Guess what? They were using a maps. And today is exactly the same. Do you want to develop an application that is use, use, useful and easy to be used by different profiling of people, rich, poor, very educated, low educated? You just use a map. I have a daughter of three years old. She, she speaks a little bit of English. She understands very well maps. We watch all the time the world, and she understands where I come from, Italy, where she was born, Dubai, where she did live, Singapore. So we want to use these UX UIs to ingest in your application, like Uber. What is Uber? 
a series of maps. Some example here you can have it is, of course, uh, any kind of application that is on tourism, for example. Okay, so you can use mapping technology to inspire traveler, to show them like where what they can discover in Indonesia, in Japan, across the world. You can show where your network fly, for example, right? Instead of putting a lot of, hey, you go from here, 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 a long list, you just use a map. And these maps can be very intelligent, interactive, can summarize a lot of data that you guys have on the back end to make a very interactive and easy to be understood uh, front end. The second thing is Location is no longer a constraint for the shopper, but it's very, very important still for retailer. Tell you a quick story. I had a friend that was always dressing very, very fashion. He had like the best toys when I was young. He was always on holiday with his parents. I was like, how possible? How this guy can be so rich and so happy? Well, very simple secret. His family was owning the central pharmacy in the middle of the city. Pharmacy, people need, pharm need medicaments. They were always walking, going there in the center of the city, buying products. He didn't do any discount. He didn't do any marketing. He didn't do any market research. He just wait there and people come. Guess what? This war is finished. Today, people can get, while they are in their bed or watching a TV in the application or that a medica, uh, any, any product from a pharmacy and it comes to you. So that's a problem for him, poor guy. I mean, he's still rich, so it's fine. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for every one of you that want to deliver products to anyone everywhere they are. But to do that, you need to understand the context. You need to understand why this person is ordering. Where is it? Is it close to one of my shops? Is it very far that I cannot deliver him? OK, how we do it? Well, many, many companies are doing already today. You can have a map in, in, the, in your website to say, hey, I deliver in this place. I'm present in this place. You want to visit my shops, is here. This is the basic one. More advanced, do you look for a specific products? Instead of waiting 10 days from Amazon to deliver, from the other part of the world. Actually, on your way to work, there is the same products, and it's cheaper. Or it's the same price, but you can have it today instead of waiting like seven days, and maybe it's never come, OK? So Bose, for example, is using this to show where you can buy a single products, OK? And this is fully integrated with their backend and their inventory, by the way. The last piece, I'm Italian, I love coffee. I hope there are Indonesian here, they love coffee. Many people love coffee anyway. Um, Starbucks offer the same product across the world. They have an application that works in many countries. When you visit a new country, I want my coffee. It's I, the latte that I know with skimmy milk, whatever. OK, I order it, and the app will tell you, perfect. Two minutes from where you are, there is a, there is a Starbucks. We will order for you. Tell me when you're leaving so we can, tell, we can prepare. When you come there, you don't do the queue. You take the coffee, you go. Easy. But a lot of technology to make this happening, OK? And we can give this technology to you. Many industries are changing, right? You guys all know, I hope, Gojek, right? Gojek, it's an old business, right? Riders. Many, many years they are there, right? What was before Gojek? Was human capital, the intelligence of the driver, the new traffic, the new where people were, more or less, and scooters, right? So scooters invest by company or by, by, by the, the, the people himself. Today, what is Gojek? Technology and network. Gojek is Google. They don't own any asset. They don't hire any people. They don't use the intelligence, I mean, a little bit. They use a little bit the intelligence of the driver, but a lot of the intelligence from technology, right? You have to be ready to compete on this new pattern of technology, right? 
and we can give you the, some of this data. What we can give it to you? For example, if you are a logistic company, right? Today, the first things you try to do is, okay, give me your address. Many millions of people in Indonesia and across Southeast Asia don't have an address. Or their address is one kilometer from where they live. The address is the center of the village. But I don't live in the center of the village, sorry. Okay, how we solve it? Well, we can give you things to do. You can learn from PlusCode. It's a new technology, open source, that we are pushing out, where you can, uh, you can use this technology to deliver wherever you want in a technological basic way and store this information to enrich your CRM. Second things, we power many, many, many websites. When you start to ingest your address, magically the address appear, right? You already experiment this in some, I don't know, e-commerce or things. Who does this? Google. Google is intelligent to understand where you are, what you are typing, three letter. We pull the, our machine learning and we suggest you an address. The only thing you have to do it, say, yes, it is here. Oh, it's not here, by the way. There is a small map on down that I can move around the pin and say, actually, it's a little bit here. And I can see my house. Very easy way to capture the address from the user to solve many, many headaches that many traditional delivering company has today in a technological way and very fancy. Okay? You can do that in maybe two days of development. Traffic. Who doesn't have problem with traffic? Okay, everyone has problem with traffic, right? We capture, I would say, the most comprehensive globally information about traffic. And we share this information with governments, with startups like Gojek, etc., and many, many other companies, right? The same data that we give to this large corporation, you can have it. You can calculate the best way to reach an address. You can calculate an ATA. You can calculate a distance based on time, not on kilometer. Who cares kilometers, right? When you watch, you know, one year ago, when I started to come in Jakarta, I was like, oh, it's so nice. Look, it's not very far, like three kilometers. Three kilometers, one hour. Oh, OK, why? So now, you know, I have to plan better, right? How can I do it? With this, right? Um, the last one is the one that normally are untouchable, banks. Banks are very powerful, they are very old, they are very connected, right? So they, they go into technology, but slowly, it's okay. Well, it's not the case anymore. You can see here, you can see everywhere in the world. Companies like Gojek, companies like Grab, that are offering financial service, right, in a completely different way, without any branches. This is the innovation. Why? Because customers want just a service. They don't care about, like, very old in institution. They don't want to spend hours to talk in a call center with somebody that asks you 15 questions about yourself before asking you to ask simple questions. Right? So this. We are working with many of these companies. I told you before, Monzo. If you don't know Monzo, Revolut, even Grab uh, uh, Financial, you should start to learn about that. Because there is a huge opportunity to innovate in this sector that is not about custody anymore, it's about financial servicing. And servicing for everyone. People that today cannot have a bank account will have a bank account in one year or two years. Your application can be there, right? And we can power this, Monzo. Every one of you know how much he spends going out last month? No one, very difficult. Maybe you don't want to know, it's fine. But if you want to know, you have to download your credit card bill. It's an Excel, it has a lot of name that you don't understand then you have to use some machine learning yourself to understand how much, which one of these were going out expense, and then 
put it together, and then trying to think about it, OK? Monzo did some, something very similar, but more intelligent, right? It took all these transactions, it cleaned it, it sent it to our places APIs, that is like all the different restaurants, all the different business that we have in our database, the same that you look in Google Maps, we can give it to you, and they put in the application. Hey, last month I spent some money in Costa Cafe. Where is Costa Cafe? By the way, I would like to say that this Costa Cafe is very, very nice, so I can send a, this to some of my friends. If it's a Costa Cafe, maybe it's very common, but it's a specific restaurant that I discover, whatever. And then, at the end of the month, I want to understand how much I spend in transportation, in grocery. It's very simple, because we have a tag for each of these different places, and then you can aggregate and create it, right? So these are just some ideas that I wanted to bring you on the table. Another one, very cool, you can do a kind of check-in, right? So you can do specific offering for people when they go in a place and change behavior. Instead of saying, with this credit card, you can have all this offer. Who cares? I just want to know right now, in the center of Jakarta, two kilometers or no, 500 meters from where I am, where are the offer? Please give it to me. Nobody does. No banks does. They don't know how to do it. So customer experience, efficiency, business intelligence, these are the things where we want to work with you, right? And every company has something in these three pillars that could be improved, right? If you want to remember just one word coming out of this session would be location intelligence. It's a very simple concept. It's location data in a cloud base where you can collect this information, store, and machine learning or analytics to take out insight to power your business. Location intelligence. It's something that many, many companies are starting to invest in. Many, many C-level people are starting to be interested in. You guys are the innovator. You are the crazy guys. You should be on this today, or tomorrow, actually. Uh, sorry, yesterday. <laughs> we have something that is quite unique. Google Maps was launched in 2005, so we had a lot of years of collecting data, trying to understand the world. In 2012, we launched the APIs, so the, 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 mm, the part for enterprise, right? For you guys, you can use it. And recently, actually last year, we integrated with Google Cloud. That's very cool because if you want to use a cloud, a powerful cloud like Google Cloud, you can now connect all our services immediately. You can create a lot of intelligence. So for example, if you can do analysis in BigQuery, you can then project immediately this analysis on BigQuery on a map and then show in an application, for example. If you have more constraints than just traffic for your operations, you can combine this information with your own constraints and create your own software, your own ATA calculator, OK? I want to now just go a little bit in detail, but not too much, OK? We have three kinds of products. First one is maps. Second one is root. Third one is places. Maps. It's the simplest one. Okay? We can give you the same UX UI that you have in Google Maps to put in your application. Okay? But on top of that, you can customize it, make the color you want, make some element more appearing more, adding your data, adding color, adding heat maps. Right? All this in a very simple way, both in a web base and inside an application via SDK. First element, very good news. If you integrate Google Maps in your SDK, it's free. So you can put Google Maps UX UI in every screen of your application, it's free. We give it to you. Why? Because we believe that this can really drive innovation. Okay? Second is route. 
So route is everything about distance, time from one place to another, combined with traffic, combined with intelligence of, hey, I have five places I have to go, which one is the best sequence? We calculate for you. This is a lot of computation that we do in a very simple API. You tell me five places you want to go, we recognize where they are, we calculate based on traffic, we give you the sequence, and we give you the directions. Very simple to implement. The third one, super powerful. Think about the largest database of every business with picture, opening hour, address, reviews, uh, comments, all together available to you. You want to launch tomorrow an application about the best restaurant in Jakarta? You do it from your computer. You create a, you know, an application form. You call Google Places. You select some of you. You do some curation. You launch it in one week. You don't have to visit any place. You don't have to update these things because these things are completely updated by us. Super simple. You want to do Monzo for Indonesia? Please do it. Last point. How you start? It's very simple. You go on Google Map Platform. We have a very nice site, just uh, relaunched uh, uh, last year. There are a lot of information, product pricings, a lot of technical documentation. And there is also a um, simple step-by-step -step get started. OK? So your technical team can go here, press on get started. I'm going to ask you, what do you want to use? OK, to drive you a little bit. After that, we're going to verify automatically if you are connected with, uh, with uh, your uh, Google uh, identifier. If you have uh, a Google Cloud account, if you don't have it, we're going to ask you. If you never open it, we're going to help you to open it. OK? After that, we're going to enable the APIs inside of your Google Cloud console. So you will see all the different APIs you are available, right? In the same console, you manage all the other workload, right? You can create a specific project for every POC or things you want to do. You are all set. You can start to use it. $200 a month free for every developing. With $200, if you have an app-based application, you can do a lot of things. Because you don't pay for any maps displaying there. And many of the other computation, it can stay in a stage or in a testing environmental, right? Then when you go larger, you can scale as much as you want. Google will power that. If in two months you are Gojek, no worries. Just be ready to pay some money. But beside that, no worries. We will power it, OK? Also, there is a lot of documentation. There are a lot of blogs that talk about that. Google Maps APIs are one of the oldest and most used APIs in the world. So don't be scared. Don't say, hey, we don't have any geo expert in my company. No need. We are the geo expert. We give you solutions. OK? And that's what I really would like that tomorrow, next week, you talk a little bit with your tech team. If you are a tech guy, just go. Try a little bit. Try to innovate. The idea today is for us to give you the possibility to test these kind of things. Test in a testing environmental for free. Test small, maybe 1% of your user. If I add uh, a map in uh, my website, what is the interaction? Can I get more conversion? Test it. Try it. OK? You will pay only when it's useful for you. I want to leave you with um, a video from uh, our uh, um, head of engineering. It's a video that is very inspiring for me. Sometimes when I'm very tired, I don't want to go to work, I watch this video, say, OK, I work for this company, it's cool. Have a look. and. Um, after the, the speaking, I will be around here. If you want to have a quick chat, uh, happy to do so. Thank you very much.
maps. They help us get to where we need to go. They make the world more understandable. And this early desire to document the world, to navigate it, has been with us since the dawn of civilization. This is the first map we know of. It's believed to be from around 600 BC. We've been on a mapping journey for over 2,600 years. It's one of humankind's driving forces. And even after all that time, the job isn't done. At first, progress was slow. Latitude and longitude came along 800 years after the tablet. A thousand years after that, the Chinese invented the magnetic needle. A burst of mapping activity in the 15th century expanded the boundaries of the documented world. New technology meant even more rapid progress. The marine chronometer opened up distant horizons, further accelerating the age of discovery. During the mid-1800s, the first aerial imagery was taken from hot air balloons. The 20th century saw exponential progress. In the 1950s, the first computer-generated map, satellite mapping in the 70s, the advent of GPS in the 80s. Fast forward to 2005, when Google joined this ancient story with our first local search index an attempt to build a catalog of where businesses were in the real world. Clearly, the moment was here. We would soon have a useful and meaningful map of the whole world. Turns out, it was a lot harder than we thought. We learned that the world is very dynamic and data quickly becomes stale. If we were ever going to succeed in having a meaningful map of the whole world, we needed a new approach. New in-house mapping techniques were developed by combining as many data inputs as possible and tightly coupling them with visualizations built on our street view, satellite, and aerial imagery assets. We were able to use humans to quickly map dozens of countries. We were helping millions of people every day, but the map of the world was still incomplete. The last three years have gotten us closer than the previous 20. Deep neural nets have rapidly accelerated our ability to produce map data directly from imagery. Machine learning also helped us guard against spam and abuse, extract information from the web, and to make our operations more efficient, bringing maps to more than a billion people. For the first time in this 3,000-year mapping journey, the completion of this task is within our sights. Ours is the generation that will deliver a useful map of the world everywhere people live and work. This new map is changing the way we travel. How we respond to crisis. It will power virtual assistants and augmented reality experiences. This new map, like the first maps, will change the world. The funny thing, even though it's been nearly three millennia, with this new map, you'll be able to hold it in the palm of your hand, just like the Babylonians once did. Thank you very much. Go innovate. Use Google Maps. Bye.